Hello all of you wonderful people, Jules here for WhatCulture.com and I've just baked up a spicy little list for you top eggs which I'm just going to put here on the sill to cool for a bit as I explain what the hell I'm on about. Now a lot of you might look at some of the entries within this list and be like, Jules you bloody sexual singularity, I really like this game or that game, how can you say that people hated it? Well my friend, my sweet dear friend. It is because while some of these games might have decent if not strong audiences right now, somewhere along the line, be it through PR nightmare or even lack of content on launch, they ended up right in the doghouse. So with an open mind, because I will be explaining why, let's take a look at some titles that deserve some love now because they've made good on their mistakes. I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com and these are 10 hated video games that you should play in 2019. Number 10. Deus Ex Mankind Divided It might be hard to think of this game without thinking of the absolutely outrageous tyre fire that was the pre-ordering system that Square Enix tried to implement. Honest to god, you needed a goddamn spreadsheet and a series of shamans manipulating fate to understand what the hell was going on. Some editions got this, while other, more expensive versions didn't, and you could unlock more content the more that other people pre-ordered. In short, it was abysmal and did nothing for the Deus Ex sequel's reputation before it dropped. In fact, things got so bad that many people actually cancelled their pre-orders and sparked off a boycott of the game and the company itself. However, the game itself, despite feeling a little bit more like an expansion pack than a true sequel, is actually very, very good. I mean, it's essentially a slight step forward from an already fantastic game, so how could you go wrong? Plus, behind it all we get further exploration into the man versus machine conflict, and if you're even a passing fan of sci-fi, the game delivers its guff with enough power and force to grab anyone's attention. Number 9. Star Wars Battlefront 2 Oh dear, this game nosedived so hard that it was painful to watch. When it was announced that EA's Battlefront would get a sequel with free expansion packs and everything being unlockable in the game without currency, fans went into a hype meltdown. Then when the game's beta came out, things started looking a bit shaky to say the least. The loot boxes within this game and the negative press attention that it caught were enough to spark an entire debate on the morality of presenting what amounted to be gambling in video games. Y you know what? The game itself is absolutely class. Sure, the single player promised a small moon but delivered only my own butt cheeks, but, but the multiplayer is bliss. After so much balancing the changes to the loot system and with more maps than ever, this stonkingly beautiful game plays incredibly well. And now, seeing as you can literally sidestep all of the bull and not buy a single box, it is a fine time to enjoy the game, and well worth investing some time in having a darth with some mates. Number 8. Rainbow Six Siege it is mental to think that some people didn't like this game when it came out, when you look at the sheer weight of people still playing it today, but it's true. At one point in time, people were very, very annoyed with Rainbow Six Siege. And it wasn't because of what was in there, but simply because of what was not, and this was very much the case when Siege dropped onto the market. It's around this time that Ubisoft really pushed the idea of games as a service, which basically masked their approach of releasing the game in dribs and drabs, pushing season passes, and also releasing a ton of different versions of the title. Three and a half years later, and Siege has turned this concept from a crutch into a cocky stride. Now bolstering a large roster of operators, Siege is one of the most played competitive first-person shooters. Yes, it still has loot packs and in-game purchases, but these are cosmetic. Finally, the meat is there and the dinner bell is ringing hard. Come on, pull up a chair. Number 7. Neo Man, it sure was unfair how much crap got levelled at Neo when it first came out. I mean, how many times do you remember it getting called just another Dark Souls clone? I mean, yes, it's not without its kernel of truth, but it really hampered the development of Neo for a while, and many attribute this negative mindset as to why the game didn't do very well in the sales department. Yet Neo is so very different from its supposed mirror self. The Far Eastern setting was refreshing, the story was compelling, and the idea of mixing up stances on the fly gave the game a depth that its challenging combat was bolstered by. Now with an entire swathe of DLC content at a much cheaper price tag, now now is a brilliant time to pick up the game, especially if you've seen and done everything in Sekiro, which has piqued the world's interest for the past few months. Just remember though, this is going to be a different experience. Number 6. The Order 1886 
Oh dear me, this game didn't so much botch its own launch as it just, well, barely showed up to its own bloody party. The game is done and dusted in a few hours and contained only a handful of rather boring werewolf fights that simply do not live up to what the game promised. However, because of this, it is very easy to overlook what a technical marvel this game is. It is phenomenally beautiful and contains so many amazing touches in its presentation that it's worth separating from the criticism just to have a look at. It's also got some solid, albeit not groundbreaking, shooting, and for the price it's asking for now, it is well worth a stomp. I can only remember how pissed off I was at paying full price for this, but now it is much more reasonable. Number 5. DMC Devil May Cry so up until this point in the list, I've just been feeding you scraps. Now we're on to the real meaty assholes that crapped all over people and charged them for the privilege. You know where you stand on the DMC remake, and no one can tell you any different. I respect that. But I tell you what, as a game, as a playing experience, and as an example of outstanding boss battles, DMC is actually really good. I hate what they did with Dante, I cannot express this enough, and I hate the sheer lack of self-awareness this title carries with it, mocking its predecessors rather than seeing that at least they knew when to poke fun at themselves, but as a game, I had an absolute blast. Plus, that soundtrack is an absolute banger. Number 4. The Last Guardian Running with Duke Nukem forever as most likely to become dust before our very eyes, The Last Guardian was in danger of never showing anything more than a handful of screenshots for a long old while. And as one might expect when you've waited so long for a game that promised the world, immediate feedback was that it wasn't worth the wait and that the game was lackluster and aimless. However, now that the storm has quelled, you can look at this game less as a self-fulfilling prophecy and what the dev team has achieved. It's very in keeping with their other titles. It's slow, it's sedated almost, it's beautiful, but it is rough around the edges. And that is okay, we all are. The point is, if you go into a Team Ico game expecting a barrage of action, you are going to be disappointed. One can only really blame the pressures put on the team and the decisions of the advertising department for making this game seem much more action-heavy in the pre-launch content. But you know what? Ignore that and relax with this game. Yes, the dog bird can be a pain in the ass, but for the most part, this is a brilliant title. Number 3. Street Fighter V I honestly never thought it would happen, but Street Fighter V almost made me hate this entire series when it first came out. It was so utterly barebones on launch that it made Dolsim look chunky by comparison, and the sheer cheek of Capcom to charge full price and promise the single player would be patched in later was like being slapped by E Honda a million times. Many point to the fact that the game was released in time for EVO, with the online taking precedent, but the game was rife with other issues, namely hidden paywalls and an underbaked customization suite on launch, yet now the game is in full swing and it is a proper heavy hitter. With the inclusion of the single player, the extra arcade features and a full roster, now is the time to appreciate Street Fighter V. I mean, it's not the best in the franchise by a long shot, but at least it's been hitting the gym between launch and now. Number 2. Batman Arkham Knight It is so hard not to get annoyed remembering the launch of this game, with it still being a sting to me and many others that Warner Brothers just decided to leave this game broken on Steam rather than fix it because it would eat into their profits too much. Oh, I'm sorry that maybe you'll have to settle for two private jets a year instead of three. Anyway, the game itself got quite a slamming because of the sheer amount of bloat and a plot that many had called from the outset. Plus, those Batmobile sections, my god, we get it, stop trying to shoehorn them in everywhere. However, when Arkham Knight puts that aside and remembers that it's a Batman game, it's glorious. A gripping story for the most part, a more refined hand-to-hand -hand combat and a vast city to explore teeming with secrets. It's brilliant, but just try to ignore that thought screaming inside your head about the PC port though. And number one, No Man's Sky. No man's game, one man's lie, we all remember this. However, I kind of wish that I had Scott in the room with me actually, because he'd be able to tell you at great lengths why this game is more relevant now than ever. 
Actually, you know what, I can just call back to a recent podcast that I did with him as we agreed on that, that since its disastrous launch and PR blunders, this game has been put right. The devs have funneled nearly every penny they've made on the original wave of sales into giving the play base something to be proud of. It now has multiplayer, it now has more options and depth, it now has combat, it now is what it promised us it was originally. And you have to commend that. This could have so easily been a hit and run affair, but the time, craft and drive to do what the devs felt they owed the player base is outstanding. So yes, while it might feel weird, I am here in 2019 telling you that No Man's Sky should be right at the top of your list when it comes to giving games a second chance. And there we go, those were 10 hated video games that you should give a second chance in 2019. Let me know what you think about it down in the comment section below, but before we go, let's talk about second chances in general, because you know what? It is okay, my friends, to try something and not succeed the first time. It is okay to give everything in life a second chance. A lot of things in our society put so much pressure on us to succeed the first time around, but you know what? It is okay to try something, learn from your mistakes, and come back stronger the next time. Take a break, be fair to yourself physically and mentally, and I promise you, things will get a little bit easier. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me at RetroJ with a zero over on Twitter. And remember, you have been awesome. Never forget that. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.